Alright, a gang, a major hurricane is about to make landfall. Here's the cone of uncertainty. A lot of folks will be impacted. Some people will see destructive winds. Part of the coast will be inundated by dangerous surge. Heavy rains could bring freshwater flooding hundreds of miles inland. In moments like this, education is empowering. Let's talk about what a hurricane is, dissect its structure, and talk about what you can expect on the ground. A hurricane is just an atmospheric heat engine. The oceans contain an incredible amount of heat. A hurricane helps transport that heat from the warmer regions near the equator up to the poles. About 5 to 6% of equator to pole heat transport in the atmosphere is done by hurricanes, so unfortunately, the environment kind of needs them. Hurricanes start as a cluster of thunderstorms. They feed off warm, humid air in contact with the warm ocean waters below. The warm waters heat the air, and so the air becomes warm and rises. That rising means you're lifting air up and away from the surface, and as you lift the air, that creates a, a void of sorts, which means there's basically a vacuum in the middle of a hurricane. And it's that strong inward suction that makes strong winds. Air from the outside of the storm rushes inwards to fill that void. Towards the edge of the storm, the air starts spiraling inward slowly, but it accelerates exponentially as you near the storm's center. The strongest winds, sometimes well over 100 miles per hour, are found around the eye. That's where all the air is rising. So much of the air rises that some of it actually hits the ceiling of the lower atmosphere. We call that the tropopause. And then some kind of curls back down, bounces back down, heats up, dries out, and punches out a clear slot in the middle. We call that the eye. That's why the eye is clear. Now, the innards of a hurricane are in perfect balance. We call it cyclostrophic balance. You have air pressure, the low pressure pulling air inwards, spiraling inwards, but at the same rate it's being pulled inwards, it's also being flung outwards by the centrifugal force. It's just like how your body is pushed outwards in the car when you drive around a sharp curve. That means the air in the eye wall is just tracing nonstop circles. It wants to fall into the eye following the pressure gradient, but it's simultaneously being flung outwards at the same rate. So it's just circle after circle after circle. If the eye did fill in, then the storm would die. There'd be no more inward pull and you wouldn't have any more winds. Basically, the atmospheric whirlpool would be dead. And that's exactly what happens when a hurricane moves over land. You have no more heating from below to lift the air. You have no more air rising, so you don't have that low pressure, so there's nothing to pull in the wind. And basically, that whirlpool fills in and weakens and the hurricane dies. Now, what is it like inside the storm? Well, long before the storm ever gets here, you start seeing wispy clouds aloft, high, thin cirrus clouds, way up there like 30,000 feet. That's outflow, exhaust fanning north or west ahead of the storm. Cirrus clouds way up there, they're made of ice crystals, like we said, 30, 40,000 feet. Sometimes they even get little rings around the sun, sun halos. Next up, you get the feeder bands, sporadic squalls with heavy rain on the outside of the system. Like many thunderstorms, the raindrops are very big. You might get occasional flashes of lightning, not that many, but there's really no wind yet. Sometimes the feeder bands even produce tornadoes. Then you get deeper into the spiral bands. Each one is a little bit heavier. The winds begin to stir, then they pick up a little more. Deeper into the hurricane, the raindrops also get smaller. It's a warm rain process, but there are way more raindrops. Rainfall rates might reach three, perhaps even four inches per hour. Now, because the atmosphere is saturated, you have extremely high rainfall efficiency. The raindrops don't really evaporate at all on the way down because the air is just so humid. And then the winds are definitely blowing hard as you reach the inner bands. First, it's windy, then sustained tropical storm force. We're talking like sustained 40 miles an hour. Then, towards the innermost bands, the hurricane conditions arrive. And just when you think the hurricane's getting bad, a lull. That lull is what we call the moat. In between bands of rising air on the inside of a hurricane and storminess, you sometimes get a bit of sinking air, subsidence, and that causes weaker winds. We call that the moat. Then it's time for the eye wall. The eye wall is that innermost ring of furious winds that surrounds the eye. The winds hit suddenly and they blow fast, sometimes more than 115 miles per hour in a major hurricane. Whoa. 
Visibility drops to near nothing. You get whiteout conditions due to the heavy rain and wind. And the noise is just ferocious. It's like a swarm of bees or a waterfall. And as you get to the inner eye wall, things get weird. The winds become more sporadic. Extreme gusts. This is what happens at landfall for a sheer tropical cyclone. This is what happens. Five mile wide vortices contort the inside of the eye, making it like a clover shape. We call these mesovortices. At the surface, miniature whirlwinds, aptly named mini-swirls, cause erratic strips of more serious damage. The eye, though, it doesn't arise suddenly. It's like falling down a flight of stairs. You only reach the center once the last mesovortex comes through. You get a bunch of gusts, then a few gusts, then only isolated gusts, and then you're finally in the eye. Sometimes it's bright, sometimes it's misty. You're in the middle of an atmospheric sink drain. You might see the entire storm swirling around you. And remember, when you're in the eye, you're only halfway done. The back half of the hurricane still has to come through, and the winds are now coming in an opposite direction, redirecting the surge and redirecting wind hazards. The eye is just the halfway point. We are going to be with you every step of the way during this hurricane and every storm. But for now, know what to expect. You now understand the sights, the sounds, and the structure of the storm. And as always, stay safe. We're here with you. I'll be in the storm nonstop giving live reports and uh, we'll, we'll all ride this one out together. That's a promise. Follow My Radar on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, and Windows.